So hi everyone, Hassan here from the Ref6. Uh, we're going to call it the Vlogcast from now on. It's an online video and podcast which you can access on YouTube or on any way you listen to a podcast. Um, my partner in crime is John. He's still a level four referee. We're, yeah. we're all working from home at the moment. And today we are joined by two, uh, again, Sussex-based referees. Um, so, Connell, do you want to just introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Connell, uh, as Hassan said, from Sussex, level three referee. Brilliant. And Pablo? Yeah, uh, I'm Pablo. I'm a Sussex-based referee and I'm a level five. Brilliant. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, really... Cool to have you both on. Uh, I know everyone's all in their rooms, locked down um, and, and being bored. How, how have you been over the last couple of weeks since, you know, the second lockdown has happened? Have you had any games? Um, and, yeah. Yeah, well, um, I'll talk about later, I had an FA Cup game, um, which I was worried about when lockdown got announced. It wouldn't actually be happening because um, it included Cray Valley, who obviously aren't classed as an elite team or the league they play in. Um, but yeah, my refereeing stops, so I'm just running the line at the moment. Okay. And Pablo, I guess, no games? No, no, no games for me, um, unfortunately. Um, I wish I could, because I'm absolutely itching to get back onto the pitch, but um, plenty of fitness drills and uh, trying to keep myself uh, busy as well. Brilliant. So um, in terms of news, there's really only one big piece of news that we wanted to touch upon. Um, last Thursday, UEFA dropped this trailer about the uh, new documentary Man in the Middle. It's a four part series um, kind of showcasing behind the scenes around a lot of European elite referees. Um, guys, did you hear about that? Have you watched it yet at all? Oh, God. Yeah, I've watched it. No, it, was, it was good watch, to be fair. Cool. Um, I think it's four parts, isn't it? So I think look forward to the next three yeah no it's it i thought it was pretty good um actually what me and john are doing in parallel to this podcast is putting together a five things we learned from the first episode and we're going to be doing that weekly so if you're listening or watching this video make sure to check youtube um for another video about specifically about man in the middle and what we learn um so in terms of today's topic we wanted to talk about is uh, cup appointments um, and specifically, I don't think there's any bigger cup competition at grassroots English referee can get um, other than the FA Cup. You know, the FA Cup basically has, or any team in the country who plays on a Saturday in the pyramid can effectively apply to be in the FA Cup. Um, and it starts way back in kind of June or July um, normally in the normal season. It will start in July, late July, August. And then go all the way through to the FA Cup final, which you guys would be watching on TV. Um, and the beauty is we've all had FA Cup appointments in some way. And that's on the men's side, that's on the women's side and Youth Cup games, FA Youth Cup games too. So what I wanted to do today was talk about specifically about the FA Cup, Cup appointments and how or why they are specifically different to a normal league game. So how many games, let's just go around. John, do you want to start with how many kind of, do you remember how many cup competitions or cup games you've, you've had from, a, from the FA specifically? From the FA, from the FA Cup, I think I've had four. Um, I've had two FA Youth Cup games, which is obviously the FA Cup for the under 19s. Um, I've had a, two FA vases and two FA trophies and I only got my two FA first FA vases with this year so they come at random times so that you don't you're not guaranteed one every year mm -hmm. um, so it's quite quite an honor to get them Brilliant. and just to give the listeners uh, an idea so the FA Cup is basically any male uh, team competition uh, club team can play in it who play on a Saturday I think to be involved in the earlier rounds, you've got to be at the top end of your leagues for the previous year and you qualify and, and it's just a big knockout tournament until the end. The FA Youth Cup is for, as John said, the under 19s. There's an FA Women's, uh, Women's FA Cup, which is the same as the men's one, but for the female side. Um, but you mentioned the trophy and the vase there as well, which are very similar to the FA Cup, but they just stop at certain levels, right? You can't get higher than... So for the FA Trophy is National League North and South teams, I believe, and the Isthmian teams and... and yeah, and the Isthmian teams, yeah. Step five levels. Um, no, step three and four. Step three and four. 
and step one and two are FA trophies. And then the VARs are step five uh, teams, right? So real host of different competitions. So um, Connell, how many, how many games have you had roughly? Do you remember? Oh, I'm not sure exact numbers. I've had probably a handful on each. I've never refereed in the, um, the youth cup actually. That's okay. one of them I haven't actually got yet. So hopefully I can get one of those soon. Yeah, a few FA Cup, a few trophies, um, a few vases. And Pablo? Uh, yeah, I've, uh, I haven't refereed an FA appointment yet. I haven't got my, I'm yet to get my first FA Cup fixture. So I've had two FA Vars games um, okay. and two Youth Cup games as well. Brilliant. So I think I've had, I've run the line on all of them and I've been in the middle of an FA Youth Cup game and possibly a Vars game, if I can remember. But yeah, so we'll get into details about specific ones. But my first ever FA Cup uh, or FA competitions appointment was on the Women's FA Cup. Um, and I'd never done women's game before. Uh, it was the extra preliminary, preliminary round of the Women's FA Cup. It was, I can't even remember the two teams, but it was at East Preston Football Club in Sussex. Um, and I, I just remember feeling, wow, I've been given this FA appointment. Uh, and I, I had this idea that when I'd get there, there'd be a big crowd, but it was just like the normal, <laughs> a normal game of football, really. Um, what about yourselves when, when you got that appointment through or like, can you describe your first appointment and then maybe a surprise or a big appointment that you got when it came down? Because they, they're different to how a normal league would send you a fixture, right? So... Do you want to chat through one of those? Um, yeah, I mean, I I remember um, my first FA Vars game. Um, I was uh, level six at the time. So when I was on the line, obviously, it's a very big shock to refereeing or um, being on the line to not so many people in a normal league match and then hopping into an FA Vars game. Um, and I remember it was um, a, against the team, the home side were playing against the team, the level above. So there was quite a few people that come down to the match. So it was definitely um, a special occasion for me um, as a level six and very nice to get the appointment through as well. Yeah. And the, the, the difference between like, I don't know how you normally get your schedule, but normally depending on the level, you're getting your fixtures through, you know, spreadsheets or through full time or something like that. But this most of the FA Cup competitions or the FA competitions come through MOAS, right? So it was the first time I've ever been given an appointment through MOAS. And I was like, oh, interesting. I'm, I'm reaching this new level. It felt, it felt like this kind of, um, you know, level up almost. Um, John, do you want to chat about, can you remember the first time you got an appointment? Yeah, it was a bit of a weird one, actually. I was working in um, a, like an after-school camp at the time. And I was at uni. And I got it, this thing from Moas. And I'm a, I get called a drama queen all the time. And um, I remember panicking and be like, oh my God, I don't have a password for Moas. How can I get this game? And for like 10 minutes, I was on the phone to my dad like, this is it. I've got given this game and I don't know how to get it. And I was scrambling around. Um, but yeah, when you finally get through and you realise the Moas, like, it takes a while to sink in. Because I, I think I'd seen my dad ref it in it. I'd seen, obviously, my team play in it. Um, and it was like, wow, I'm actually going to be part of it this year. And you don't realise how early it starts until you see that first one. Like, mm -hmm. up until I refed in it, I totally disregarded the FA Cup starting in July. And for referees, it starts in June when we take the fitness test. Yeah. You have to run an extra 200 metres in the fitness test to be able to do cup games. Um, so, yeah, it, it was like, OK, now I have to switch on now. Like, I'm ready. So it was a bit of a weird one. It's, I find it strange because it feels like one of the biggest games you'll get all season and it's probably your first game of the season. I don't know yeah. if you felt that too. Um, yeah, so Connell, talk us through your um, your memories of getting cup competitions through MOAS, is it? Yes, yeah, so my first one, I, wasn't, I was level four when I first got my first FA appointment, so I felt like I waited quite a long time to get one. Yeah, uh, it does. It yeah. sweeter when I did get it. Um, as you say, Hassan, it is literally... You think of this big FA Cup game, it's preliminary round, I think a big crowd, but it's not really, it's not really what it's built up to be. Um, it was two teams in Surrey, which I've never really heard of. Um, but then again, just being involved in the FA Cup, um, you see so many lower league teams go through to the, the big rounds. And you, you wonder, will I be, will I referee this team at some point? Will this team go on and be, be one of those teams this year? Yeah. 
I mean, look, we're, we're from Sussex, right? And I, was it last year or the year before that Chichester got round to, to the second yeah, round, well, right? Definitely. Last year, right? So that just shows how, how cool that is because, one, we know them as a team because we would have refereed or run the line. But the fact that, you know, they've gone through those rounds, the preliminary rounds, they would have started really early and they would have been games that we would have done, right? Um, but you touched on something that was really interesting there was that the game was in Surrey, mm-hmm. right? So my first... My first FA Cup appointment was at a place called Newport. Now, the only place I knew that's called Newport was in Wales, right? The, you know, the League Two. I'm like, nah, there's no chance I've got Newport. That's ridiculous. And then I looked it up and I, I didn't notice that in brackets it had IW next to it. And I didn't know what IW meant. Um, so I Googled it and it turned out it was on the Isle of Wight. So not only had I've got a new... Um, you know, uh, I'd, I'd be refereeing in a different county, which, you know, is very rare for someone at my level. But the fact that I'd have to get a boat to go to my game was just hilarious. Yes. Right? <laughs> like, who imagined getting a boat to their game? So, um, so that was great. But then, then what we had to realize is just the complexity of having to get three people from different areas to this island, right? Because... You know, there's only two places you can get a boat from. And it just happened that on that weekend was a festival on that on the island. So actually, we had to get like a ridiculously early, like 9 a.m. boat over because otherwise they were fully booked. So just a crazy day out. It was like 14 hours of my day to do a 90 minute game of which, you know, I got paid £20 for the privilege and everyone else drove. So I didn't actually get any travel money. Um, but I'll never forget it. It was just this incredible day out where, you know, you you feel like you've had that kind of kicking off of the FA Cup for the rest of the season. You know, when your, your Michael Olivers or your Anthony Taylors go out and do the, the, the cup final, you're like, okay, cool. Well, you know, I set these guys off all the way back in July. Um, so let, let's chat about kind of your preparation for the games because in most cases, you'd never heard of the teams before. So how do you go around preparing? So Pablo, do you want to chat about kind of the Vars game that you did or the Youth Cup game that you did? Yeah, I mean, um, it was very much, as I say, I was, I've been on the line for them. So it was very much working um, to help the referee out. So whatever moulding around the referee, whatever the referee um tends to instruct to us um obviously it's sometimes felt that it was that bigger occasion that special occasion so um sometimes the referees would say let's get there a little bit earlier um some referees didn't like to change anything at all and just keep it normal um Mm -hmm. but it's very much you do feel like it's a, a different game a special occasion and it's 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 different to your normal uh league matches i think so Definitely. Did you do any preparation for the game in particular um, that you would do differently than than the normal league game? Um, personally, um, no, but I always like to have a look, regardless if it's league or cup game, um, if I can find a clip of teams and just watch a quick highlight reel to get some idea of how they play. Um, always like to think it gives me a bit of a, a, marginal, a marginal gain to take into the match as well, so... Cool. And Connor, what about yourself? Like, so I, I guess you, you mentioned it during, uh, during the intro earlier around, you know, you've got an FA Cup game this year on the first round and you were worried it wasn't, wasn't going to happen. So do you want to talk us through like, how, you know, getting that appointment and the worry leading up to it and any preparation you did leading up to it? Were you running the line or you were in the middle? You were running the yeah, line. Yeah, I was on the line. I was on the line to Haven and Waterloo VLV Cray Valley in the first round. Um, I can't remember what day. It might have been the Monday. It was a Sunday game. I got the appointment for on the Monday. Mm-hmm. And I think it might have been like two days after that, the lockdown begun. Yeah. Um, I think I'm a date right. Um, so I get the game and I'm like, I'm really excited for it. Because um, first round, you're thinking, this is where you want to be. But then I look at the game and it involves Cray Valley, who I don't know if everyone knows that it's me and South East team. Mm-hmm. Um, and it suddenly dawned on me that they're not classes elite. Um, so they might have been going into lockdown. Um, so that made me panic thinking, oh, the game's going to be cancelled and my five-minute excitement of getting the game is going to be very short-lived. Um, but then it got clarified quite soon after that it will be going ahead. Um, 
how I prepared. I'd refereed Cray Valley last year, so I knew a little bit about them. Um, I'd run the line, haven't, about four or five times last year, so I knew them pretty well. I knew the manager, Paul Doswell, quite well as well. Um, yeah, I'd, as have I said, trying to get as many clips as possible. Uh, on Moas, we have this thing where it shows like offsides and different incidents from Haven's last few games. Um, so you can look at those and see how they play. Um, they're going long, they're going short, um, stuff like that, really. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say I addressed it any differently to a normal game. Because at the end of the day, it is just another game. And um, as much as you build up to be this massive appointment, if you build up too much, then that's when external things take put pressure on you and um, you can at the end of the day make a wrong decision because of that. And do, because, you, because it happened during lockdown and no fans were allowed there, did that mm -hmm. make it easier or harder to be an official on that day? Does it, well, it, to be honest, running the line, I quite like having no fans there because I can get called all sorts of names. So it's quite <laughs> nice, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, yeah, I found out quite soon when that game was going to be streamed on the BBC. Yeah. Um, which I, I presume it's another sort of pressure, but we get analysed on video, assessed on video every game anyway. So the idea that I'm being streamed on the BBC, I've just got a few more observers kind of watching me <laughs> in a way. That's the only way I saw it really. Um, if I make a wrong, wrong decision, then I'm going to be, I'm going to be battered for it anyway. So <laughs> yeah. it's just taking the pressure off yourself really. And kind of embracing the fact, yeah, you've got this game and it's been on the BBC and yeah, just trying to enjoy experience as much as you can. Realistically, there's, I think they had 10 different games streamed on the BBC for that round, something like that, right? So yeah, most right. likely the people watching were going to be the Haven't Waterlooville fans or the Cray, Cray Valley fans, right? Yeah. So instead yeah. of them just giving you rubbish in your ear during the game, they were doing it from the comfort of their own home. Yeah, and I'm more than happy with that. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is the way forward, we think. <laughs> yeah, 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 cool. And then, so talk us through, um, John, you had your, well, you were going to have your FA Youth Cup game this year, but obviously that, you know, we, we talked about your injury. So do you have any specific memories from your cup games uh, in terms of, you know, the, the build-up to it? The... Um, yeah, the build-up to it is usually pretty similar. The only thing I change is my pre-match meal bef the night before. I eat a little bit more pasta. Um, okay. because if it goes to extra time then my legs can deal with it a little bit better my body can deal with it better interesting cool um but obviously coming from a sport background that's obviously how i've learned um again we've alluded to this in a previous podcast about my um, habits of not doing pretty much research compared to these two um however connell makes a good point that he has the tool for him like he gets given my ass he gets given the clips to watch so that's fairly easy whereas Pablo is now going out of his way to find YouTube, the clips of the team on YouTube yeah 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 and um if I, if I was in Connor's position I'd watch the clips but I'm not so I'm not going to do what Pablo does so I'm fairly <laughs> similar to how I'm going to do it um yeah I might get to the ground a little bit earlier just because there's usually you got to explain to managers it's extra time not extra time um and that's really it well, usually I'm traveling further as well actually so I leave myself extra time whilst I'm going to be late yeah the the one thing I was always paranoid about was I'd constantly read the competition rules and uh, for those who haven't read competition rules from a referee's perspective before they're these like five or six page maybe even longer pdf of all the different rules that relate to the competition you know what players are allowed to play what teams are allowed to play how the money gets shared up but what you care about as a referee is does it have extra time or not how many subs are allowed and is there penalties? Does it go to a replay and all of that? And for some reason, I just kept a lot of these competitions have different versions of those. Right. So I always kept going back and back and making sure that I had it. I always made sure I had a copy on my phone at the game, just in case someone queried it. And, you know, they, you know, I had the evidence to go back to. So that was one thing that I would always do. I just had this fear that I would be the one that, you know, didn't play the extra time and thought it was going to replay and that become the news story, you know, like that, that was horrendous. So, um, so let's talk about some actual matches that you've done. So you meant, you mentioned having a Waterloo on Cray and, and your games, you know, did anything happen in these games that were different to, to normal games? And, you know, how many times do you go to extra time and have you been to penalties? 
talk us through some of those. I think with the FA Cup, what you tend to get is that the, the lower teams are well up for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's exactly what Cray were. Cray, the, I mean, there's a two-league difference and you really couldn't tell. Um, I, it's hard to say what haven't think about it, but they probably go into the game thinking we're expected to win, whether that adds any more pressure to them and affects their performance, who knows. But on the day, Cray were more than matched haven't. Um, so even as an official going in, you think, oh, this is going to be quite a one-sided game. But then again, FA Cup, it means so much for a lower league team, the, the prize money and whatnot. So um, it does level the playing field slightly. And did anything specific, like, was it a memorable game in any way other than it was the first round of an FA Cup? Um, it was a memorable game. But, um, yeah, a couple of decisions. There was a, a penalty shout, which referee got spot on. Um, a red card, he got spot on again. So it's once again more added pressure getting those big decisions right. And I think the best thing going over that game is that we got all the big decisions right. Um, mm -hmm. So no one's. Did, had away you been out with that referee before? Yeah, I've done a I've done a fourth for him last year. So I didn't okay. him for a bit. Yeah. So that helps, right? Going into settling your nerves, the fact that you know on one of your biggest games of your career that someone you've been out with, you, you know that. What, you know what you're going to expect from their pre-match and, and things like that. So interesting. Yeah, exactly. And he's a good referee as well. He, he doesn't take himself too seriously and he knows how to how to chill out for a game. So yeah, definitely. Yeah, I had one of those in my FA Youth Cup game. The one that I did in the middle um, was um, Worthing Town against... Um, oh man, the name escapes me now, but they were a League Two youth team right so I go into this game thinking wow this is going to be the biggest one-sided game you'll ever see and it was but the teams couldn't score oh Worthing took a lead 1-0 really early and the other team that I can't remember were fighting for ages and ages to get back in the game so it was a relatively easy game to referee because it was one half physically but um you know mentally and emotionally it became a real challenge for this this academy team because you know they sh they expected like you said haven't may have may have expected to walk into this game and roll this team over but it didn't it went it ended up being one all went to extra time and went all the way to penalties and i just remember it feeling absolutely exhausted less men uh, less physically because um you know extra time comes and all of a sudden the game changes. It's just long ball after long ball after long ball. And so you're doing a lot more kind of end-to-end -end sprinting. But can you remember, have you had many games extra time, Pablo, or, or John or, or Connell, about, you know, where those games are just, just dragged on and just got longer and longer? Um, and how did your body react to it? I mean, I haven't had any FA appointments go to extra time and penalties as of yet. Um, I'm sure I will run into one at some point um but i have had a county cup game where um i was in the middle for a 23s county cup game and i remember that when it was 1-1 at full time uh the team went 3-1 up in extra time and the away team equalized 3-3 an extra time and won the penalties 9-8 wow. um the away team so that was uh a long tuesday evening um very physically demanding as well because it's one of those end-to-end -end games. I think I ran something ridiculous like 10 kilometres, <laughs> which yeah, no. for me uh, is, um, is, is rare um, with the level of football I do. Um, but it was very enjoyable. So, Why do extra time and penalties only happen midweek? I don't understand that. <laughs> yeah, that's such a yeah. point. <laughs> Never on a Saturday yet. No, no never on a Saturday. All, all of mine, I can remember, are under lights. Yeah, they were. I don't know. Um, you find it's always the game. It's end to end as well. It's always mm. up and forward. Up and, I had one where it was up and back. And I, I don't think I stopped for ninety minutes. And a team scored in the ninetieth minute. I thought, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> and then for the next half an hour, I was back and forward, back and forward. I think by the time it was the end of the game, I think I had to lie in a like dark room and compose myself about what was going on and I, I didn't yeah. know where I was what I was doing and, and that's where you know I know this this season is different because we all have to go to games travel to games separately from our colleagues but sometimes you know after a long game like that you just 
hope that you're not the one driving home that you can just put your feet yeah. up for the next next 30 minutes on the drive home or however long that drive back is um so i, I want to kind of round this up so that we kind of give some advice to people who may not have had a cup appointment before or haven't had a few ha haven't had many so what pieces are like two or three pieces of advice would you give them um those listening and watching so pablo do you want to start being you know being early on in your career what what are the things that you've picked up on uh, and that you would give back in terms of advice yeah um i think one of the biggest things obviously is making sure you read those cup rules um, regardless of what it is. Um, I know you were saying earlier, Sam, how important it is to just go through it. Definitely, you don't want to be making um, in headline news, uh, <laughs> especially if it's a national competition, for not having um, you know, read the rules properly and coming to the incorrect outcome of the game. But um, I think the other one which is quite important for me is not to overcomplicate it. Um, you know, maybe do the extra bit here and there because it's a different fixture to your normal league game. Um, but try and keep your um, schedule pre-match as normal as possible. Don't overcomplicate it. I think Connell hit the nail on the head earlier in the sense that you, if you start to overthink it, you don't want to um, have other factors influencing you. Nerves come in, um, which can eventually lead to incorrect decisions. So keep it simple. Keep it simple, stupid. I like that. Um, Connell, go for it. Yeah, I mean, the main one is Pablo just touched on. Don't build up something that is not. It's mm -hmm. obviously great to get these games and the FA obviously recognise you're doing well this season. But yeah, don't build up for something that's not. It's not the World Cup final. It's a privilege to get these games, but um, go out and enjoy it. Um, embrace it um, and show everyone why you got those games, basically. That's the main bit of advice I'd give. So, uh, just coming back on that, it's kind of like recognition for where your career's at right now right from the fa and you know just just it's it's part of your journey it's not the end of your journey right it's yeah, the next there's ladder there's a reason why you've got that game uh, yeah. so don't think oh god why have i got this game why they give me this they, they wouldn't have given you that game if you don't deserve it um mm -hmm. so yeah just go out and show them why you've got it no oh, brilliant Go on, John, other than eat more pasta the night before, which I think is actually yeah. a great point, right? Thinking about prepping for extra time mentally and physically. Yeah. Um, yeah, my big thing is, similar to them two, go out and enjoy it. Like, it's an occasion. Like, don't build up something it's not. It's a good day out. Enjoy it. Smile. Like Connell said, he didn't get his till he was um, a first year four. I got mine as a... You got yours as a five. I got mine as a five. Pablo got his as a six or a five. Like, you don't know when you're going to get them. You don't know when the next one's coming. So go out and enjoy it while you can. Um, Savour the moment. Sometimes when this COVID stuff's not open, you get a big crowd. Enjoy it. Um, and yeah, that's my biggest thing. Like, just go out and smile. You got there, like Con said, on merit. So why not go out and have a good day out? Brilliant. And I'm not going to add anything to that because I think all three of your points were great. Go and enjoy it. Keep it simple. Don't build it up to something it's not. Um, really great points. Uh, Pablo and Connell, thanks so much for being on our podcast this week. Um, I would love to invite you back for future weeks. So please make sure, you know, if you're happy to, we'd love to have you back. Um, to those who are listening or watching, thanks so much for uh, continuing to, you know, follow the Ref6 journey. We're hoping that these videos and these podcasts are adding some value to you. Um, just one thing for us is, if possible, if you're on YouTube, make sure to su subscribe to our channel now. And if you're listening on a podcast, you know, subscribe to us. And if you can, leave us a five-star rating. If you want to leave us any less than that, don't just five star yes. rating that'll be great um once again john connell pablo thanks so much for your time and for those listening we'll see you next week thank you guys